إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مدل له وما يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار Verily all the praise and certainly all of the glorification and all of the magnification and all of our dedication it should be for Allah and Allah alone and I publicly I inwardly and I outwardly declare and attest to the whole world that there is nothing or no one that deserves to be worshipped except for Allah Rabbul Izza and I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the finality of messengers sent to guide mankind from the darkness into the light was Al Mustafa عليه الصلاة والسلام. من عنوان اليوم the attitude of gratitude. the attitude of gratitude. in light of a young man, a young boy or a young woman growing up in the land, being from amongst the Muslimin. Knowing, ya ikhwan, that Allah Azza wa Jal gave you life to begin with. And that He gave you parents, and He gave you teachers, and He gave you mentors, and He gave you friends, and family, and company, and coaches, and imams, and khatibs, and psychologists, and doctors to help you, ya ikhwan. We should be grateful, ya ikhwan, that we have people while we're growing up to help educate us and become murabbis, nurture us. To be better people. There is the haqqoq of Allah and there's the haqqoq al-abad. There are the rights of Allah and then there's the rights of the people, ya ikhwan. So this young boy, ya ikhwan, ya akhawat, and we're talking about gender, gender equality, it's also for the girls as well, was nurtured by Allah Azza wa Jal from the beginning of the sustenance as they were born. Also the parents. His parents mentored him and educated him and taught them. When they came into this world, Ya Akhwan, me and you, and every individual, we came into this world not knowing anything. We had no knowledge. We didn't even know our own name until our parents gave us their name. They, our parents, Ya Akhwan, they taught us how to walk, how to talk, to brush our teeth, to comb our hair, to tie our shoes, how to eat, how to use the washroom properly, how to dress. We, our parents provided us a room and board. They gave us food, drink, clothes, transportation, money in the pockets. Our parents would give us money. They gave us underwear. They gave us toothpaste. They gave us deodorant. They gave us perfume. They gave us many things in life, Yahweh. The attitude of gratitude. The attitude of gratitude, Yahweh. Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah Ta'ala. But now there, Yahwan, there are many people, they're not appreciative, they're not grateful, Yahwan. 
Shakiran and Shakuran. The one who is appreciative and the one who is all appreciative, ya ikhwan. Qala Allah Ta'ala, ba'da wudhi bilam al-shaytan al-rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, walakinna akthar al-nas la yashkurun. Most of the people, they're not grateful, ya ikhwan. They're not grateful for having their life. They're not grateful for having Islam. They're not grateful for any of the amenities and the abilities and the agilities that Allah has given you. Jude, make ruku because my leg or my knee hurts or my shoulder hurts or my hand hurts. Sometimes, ya yeah, my heart hurts and my pockets hurt. And at the same time, ya yeah, we have to be in a state of shukr to Allah Azza wa Jal. Ya ikhwan, qala Allah ta'ala wa lakad makanakum fil ardi wa ja'alna lakum fil ma'isha qalilan ma tashkurun and we have certainly established you upon the earth and made for you therein ways of livelihood little are you grateful Ya ikhwan, the place that we live the place that we live Ya ikhwan some people they complain I'm living down in the bottom of the barrel, as they say. Or they're living down in the basement. Some people, ya ikhwan, they have a small house. Some have a big house. Some have no house at all. And this is the problem, ya ikhwan. I, with my own eyes, back in the year 2000, I went to Egypt, ya ikhwan, and I seen with my own eyes. It's not a story or a fairy tale. I'm telling you, brothers, I witnessed this with my own eyes. There's a city called Medina Til Maut in Egypt. Where it's a cemetery, ya ikhwan. I seen this with my eyes. Where people have little cardboard boxes and they put this on top of the grave and they sleep on the grave because they don't have a house to live in. Medina til mots. They live on top of the cemeteries, ya ikhwan. With their wife and their children. And we, ya ikhwan, complain about what we have and what we don't have. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went on to say in one riwayah, and this riwayah is in Abu Dawood, la yashkurullah, man la yashkurin nas. In another riwayah, man lam yashkurin nas, lam yashkurullah. The first hadith, he does not thank the people who is not thankful to Allah. In another narration, he does not thank the people, he hasn't thanked Allah. So I want to tell everybody here, we, jazakallah khair, for all your duas and your support and everything that you brothers have done to help me out and my brother here, we thank you for being our brothers, for being supportive of us. We need your duas from time to time, brothers. And many people, ya ikhwan, they come to a point where they forget Allah Azza wa Jal and they only worry about me, nafsi, nafsi, I'm a VIP. I'm very important. You should be focusing on me. This is the mentality of the entitlement of some people. Instead of Allahu Akbar min kullu shay, which is the meaning of Allahu Akbar, if you did not know, that Allah is greater and bigger than everything and everyone, ya ikhwan. So Allah Ta'ala, He has reminded the believers, if you believe in Allah in the last day, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَكْفِرُونَ ya ikhwan. Allah Ta'ala goes on to say, therefore remember me. Whatever your situation is, you're having a hard time in life. We all have had a hard time in life. But if you remember Allah, if you remember Allah, I'll say it again. If you and I remember Allah, Allah will remember us. We remember you. Therefore remember me and I will remember you and be grateful to me for my countless blessings, my countless favors, and never be ungrateful to me. But why me? I've heard Muslims say, I want to curse at God. I want to curse at Allah. Why? My life is miserable. My life is hard. I don't have any shoes. But then the young man, he's seen a young man who had no feet. Then you realize the ni'mah that you have. You have feet. You have hands. You have, you have the ability to hear and to walk. Some of us, we have sight. Some of us, we don't have sight. Some of us, we have children. Some of us, we don't have children. Some of us, we have jobs. Some of us, we don't have jobs. Some of us, we have cars. Some of us, we don't have cars. Some of us have sanity. Some of us don't have that. 
Many of us, ya ikhwan, we need to correct ourselves. As Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, as my brother was quoting him earlier, and really, ya ikhwan, this is so beautiful. They called Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah the heart doctor. And check this out, Sheikh. He has the uslub, with Allah's permission, to correct the kulub, ya Sheikh. He had the style in his writing to correct the heart, ya ikhwan. He went on to say, that the submissiveness of the grateful slave to the one who is all appreciative. This is the first thing. Number two, that his slave loves him, Allah. Number three, his acknowledgement of the bounties, praising him with blessings and speaking about his blessings and the grace without boasting, ya akhwan. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given me a mustache. He's given me a beard. Some brothers, they can't grow a beard. I know a brother, he loves the sunnah so much, all he can grow is this much of a beard. And he's been criticized over the years. For those that don't know what I'm doing, I'm just picking a little small piece of my beard like this with my, my finger and my thumb. That's all that he has. And people critique him. You say you're on the sunnah, why don't you grow his beard? Because all Allah gave him is four hairs, ya ikhwan. One of the most knowledgeable brothers that I know. Another brother, Allah gave him a big, huge beard. And people think because he's got a big beard, that means piety, ya ikhwan. Ya we have different blessings that Allah has given us. The Shaykh, he wanted to say, praising him with his blessings, tabarak wa ta'ala, the blessed and the exalted, and speaking about his blessings, alhamdulillah, Allah gave me some brothers that I know that they love me and I love them. Allah yarda alayk. Not using these blessings and what he hates, that you take some money that Allah gave you, halal money, and you go down now to the new, brand new casino over by the racetrack. Ya Juan, with my own eyes, I seen one Muslim brother. And maybe he didn't know. Maybe he's old. Maybe he forgot. Maybe Nasya, he forgot. I seen him as I was walking through the mall, filling out the, the Ontario lotto gaming thing. He's thinking maybe he's going to get some lottery. He's going to become a multimillionaire. Because he thinks he needs more. Ya Juan, if you need more, ask Rabbul Izzah. He is Al-Ghani. He is Al-Razak. So my dear brothers, when we look at the situation... Allah Ta'ala has told us over and over and over and over again. Inna hadaynahu sabila imma shakiran wa imma kafura. Indeed, we guided him, meaning us, to the way of being grateful or the possibility of what is known as ungrateful, what is known as kufr bi ni'ma ya ikhwan. Kufr bi ni'ma. And the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned it in one hadith. And it's not explicitly only for the woman, this could be the man as well, where a wife, she complains about her husband not giving her this and that and that and this and this and we need more of this. And then at the same time, she has a halal husband, which many sisters, they don't have a halal husband. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned kufr bin ni'ma. But it could be men too that have a kufr bin ni'ma, ya ikhwan. They're ungrateful for the favors that Allah has given us, ya ikhwan. Allah Ta'ala goes on to say, لَعَلَّكُمْ tashkurun," So that you would be grateful. So, Ya Ikhwan, this young boy, this young girl growing up, they start to feel entitled. Mom, I need a new, brand new, was it Samsung 20, Samsung uh, i20, i15, I don't know, I can't even keep up. Every year there's a new phone coming out. So if I got a brand new phone this year for 1000 or 2000 or 3000 or 4000 or $5,000, whatever the new technology is, by next year, ya ikhwan, that phone is obsolete. It's no good no more, according to what society says. So you need to get a new one. Why? Because you got to keep up with someone that me and Abu Hafsa know. They're called the Joneses. The Joneses means the neighbor. The neighbor's glass is greener. The neighbor has a bigger house. The neighbor has a better car. The neighbor's children have better shoes. Everything the neighbor has is better than us. This is called keeping up with the Joneses in North America, Yahweh. Now, many of us, as my brother was saying yesterday, we're like the Jacksons, man. We're just trying to survive. We don't have nothing. Call Allah Ta'ala. Ya ayyuhalladheena amnu kullu min al-tayyibat ma razaqanakum Washkuru lillah in kuntum iyahu ta'abudun. Oh, you have iman. Oh, you who believe in Allah. Eat from the good things which we have provided for you and be grateful to Allah. It is indeed Him that you worship, Yahwan. Yahwan, your wife struggles to cook some food. Maybe your wife doesn't struggle to cook some food. Maybe you order Uber Eats out every night. Or maybe you go and you cook 
As some of the brothers in their tradition, the way I was raised, my dad used to cook every now and then, so I like to go into the kitchen. And alhamdulillah, ya ikhwan, Allah gave us something to eat, and after we eat, we should be saying alhamdulillah wa shukrillah, ya ikhwan. This is from our deen, ya ikhwan. I can remember visiting some of my Christian family members before they ate, they made this big long 10 minute prayer asking the Father, what they call Allah, and we don't say that. We say Allah is Rabbul Izzah, thanking Him for His bounties, ya ikhwan. Being happy with the fruitful food that Allah has given them, the nourishment and the beautiful food. But yet, ya ikhwan, the Muslim, there should be no one on the earth that beats the Muslim and thanking Allah and being grateful to Allah. Shukr lillah. Walhamdulillah. This is the aqidah of the Muslim. Akuli kulli hadha. Astaghfirullah. Tubu alaykum. Wassalamu alaykum. Wassalamu alaykum. Astaghfirullah. Innahu furzahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdin kathiran tayyiban mubarakin feeh. Kama yuhibbu rabbuna wa yirda. He who is not thankful to the people, he isn't thankful to Allah. The fact of having entitlement, the fact of having the right to something, this is for me, give it to me, it should be for me, I should have it. The belief that one is inherently deserving special privileges. Special privileges, ya akhwad. I've seen it, brothers, amongst the ranks of the Muslims and the non-Muslims. People bypass people. When I was younger, going to the club, you know, they're a little bit more maybe attractive or they have more money or nicer suit. You know, they, someone gave them a special pass, they got the VIP pass. There's no VIP pass only for the muttaqeen, ya akhwan. We're all trying to get to become the muttaqeen, ya akhwan, to the Jannah. VIP, look at me, I'm a very important person. I should get everything that I want. This is how a brat behaves, ya akhwan. Life is a toil. Life is a struggle. The antidote, ya ikhwan, for entitlement, it is gratitude. And unfortunately, many of us, we've lost our way, my dear brothers. So we want to, put, pit, uh, we want to paint a picture for you guys what entitlement looks like. Entitlement looks like this. Feeling like other people, they owe you something. Number two, believing that people have to do what you say. Don't you hear me? I'm the PhD, I'm the Sheikh, I'm the Hafiz. I should get the burger first. <laughs> I've seen this before, brothers. Feeling like you have the right to privilege treatment, ya ikhwan. And I've seen this as me and some of our brothers, we were coming back from Saudi Arabia, we were doing the Hajj in 2019. And our whole group consisted of about 85 Canadians and we're waiting in line to get on a particular airlines from a particular country. And there was a young student from that particular country, Ya Akhwan, who he decided, because he's from that particular country of this particular airlines, that now whoever he is in his mind, he thinks that he's better than all of us, he bypassed all of us like this. And then he went to the front and he put down Jawaz al Safari from his country, and so he can get in, and they let him in, and he was able to get onto the plane before everybody else. But yeah, he still has to wait for us. The plane ain't leaving until everybody on the plane gets there, Ya Akhwan. But he thought he's better. 22 years old. Wallahi ya ikhwan, I was praying when we land in Canada. I was hoping and I was praying that just as he was getting ready to go to customs, I would have been al-an fil al-Canada. Al-an fil Canada. Now we're in Canada. I got the Jawaz and Safari in Canada. Now I wanted to do that just to show him. But unfortunately, if you're someone who's coming from another country, you have to go to another bin like this. I was like, subhanAllah, I wanted to show this kid what entitlement looks like. Sometimes, ya ikhwan, you have to do that if you have the ability. Thinking that you deserve stuff for free. Feeling that you deserve stuff for free just because you look so good. You smell so good. You're so educated. I should get stuff. I need stuff for free. I've seen Muslims like this. Believing that only the only way to do things, believing there's only one way to do things. It's my way or the highway. Only you got to do it the way I want to do it. Expecting things to happen without giving any effort. I just show up, man. I'll get it there, man. I'm going to pass the test just by me coming into the door. Don't you know who I am in my family? Don't you know who we are? We're the malah. We're the high-ranking people, man. As soon as we come through the door, you should be serving us. This is an entitlement. Confusing access to someone with permission to ask for more. Confusing access to someone with permission to ask for more, Yahweh. You should just get access just because who you are. Assuming that what you say matters more than what others want. 
Well, I have an opinion. And Ra'i, I have an opinion. And subhanAllah, ya khwan, it just came in my head the opinion of Umm al Khattab, radiallahu an. He said, Adda'u sunnah tandi wala ta'ri duna laha bil ra'i. It just stuck in my head. Umm al Khattab, he said, Let the sunnah go forth and don't oppose it with your own opinion. This is what he used to say all the time to the people. They would say, Well, you know, an Indi, an Indi shay, and I have something, you know. Akhi, your shay'an is good, but you know, call Allah, call Rasulullah, that's what we're rocking with. That your opinion means more than anybody else's. My sheikh said, my imam said, I said, my father said, my grandfather said, the leader of my community said, so and so said. Yeah, Juan, we're rocking with Quran and Sunnah. That's what we love. Number two, or number, number eight, assuming, selecting your values as a way for the people to exist. Selecting your values. This is how you have to dress. If you don't dress like this, you're not a Muslim. Muslims have told me that. Sometimes they see me when I'm not wearing my thoba mud in the street. Brother, you can't dress like that. Well, why not? You have a delil from Quran and Sunnah? Yeah, but you look like these people. Which people? Which people? You look like the people from the street. Well, brothers, that's where I came from. I came from the street. Allah brought me from the street unto the member of Walilah Ilham. I was still in the street, and with Allah's guidance, all praises due to Him, I wouldn't be here, brothers. Everything I have, everything I have, everything I have is from Allah Azza wa Jalla. There is nothing that I have that's not from Allah Azza wa So my dear brothers, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ And the last ayah, ya khwan, وَأَتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلُّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةُ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوحَا Ya khwan, I want, this here is a khutbah that we need some the shot, we need some participation. For all the brothers, I want you to go home today and I want you to write a list of all the ni'mas that Allah has given you. Try to put down at least 20, 30. I have my eyes, I have my ears, I have my hands, I have my food, I have a drink, I have a wife, I have a car, I have two pairs of clothes. Write down everything. I have a watch, I have teeth. One of the brothers, I haven't seen him in a long time. He's getting older and he got very sick and he got some type of infection in his mouth and some of his teeth fell out and because some of his teeth fell out, a whole bunch of his other teeth fell out. And I, it's not the brother that I know. His smile is not like it used to be, Yahwan. His smile is gone. He can't even greet you with a nice smile. When he smiled at me that day, I was like, oh. And I was like, what happened to the brother? Yahwan, just our smile. It could be a sadaqah. So what ni'mas of Allah are we being ungrateful for, my dear brothers? This is a reminder, first and foremost, for me and for the young boy and for the young girls that are out there that they believe that everything should be just given to them, ya Juan, on a silver spoon or a silver tray. No, ya Juan, that this dunya, it's the dunya. It's meant to mess with you. It's meant to give you a hard time. And you have to work hard to get from here to the, to the akhirah. And here's what, what I learned from one of my sheikhs. He said that the goal is not only to get to the end of the path, which is the Surat al-Mustaqim, but to die upon the path, ya Juan. And the scholars, they used to say, at tariq qabl rafiq that the path is more important than your friend. If your friend or your family or your wife or your sister or your sheikh or whoever, they leave the path, you stay on the path. Prophet Lut and some of the other anbiya, either their wife left them, their son left them, their family left them, the family fought against them, ya This path is not a path for people that are going to be lazy. It's a path that you have to work hard with. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fi ala amin al kumjid we ask Allah azza wa jalla to make us grateful for every ni'ma every blessing every barakah and every hasana this is one thing brothers that you have something there may be barakah in one dollar that you have wa lillahi alham aqim as-salat wa yarhamak Allah attitude of gratitude inshallah I'm, just, I'm, I'm gonna leave this one. I'm gonna leave this last week. I got it. He already, he already prayed already. Yeah. Yeah. The Qama. Yeah. You want to pray with us or you want to, you want to sit down? Okay, okay. It's the
صفوفكم استووا تلو تراسو وصله صف وصله الله وقتله صف وقتله الله straighten the rows straighten the rows straightening the rows is part of perfecting the salat some brothers are looking at me like they're weird if you lived in the time of the Prophet Sallam you would not start salat until you did this and they had people like Omar that would smash your feet down if you weren't straight we need, we need some nine foot brothers in here to smash our feet together so our hearts can come together inshallah <laughs> so if your brothers have the thing called a cellular device it's not going to help us worship Allah, so please shut it off at this at your convenience. Zakalah. So, we should be grateful to worship Allah, Yahweh. There's people running right now, chasing money, and they're not worshiping Allah. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Deen Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem Sirat Al-Ladheena An-Amta Alayhim وَيْوِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَنْضَالِينَ آمين أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكْ وَوَضَعْنَا أَنْكَ وِزْرَكْ الَّذِي أَنْكَذَ ظَهْرَكْ وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ فَإِنَّمَا الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَ إِنَّمَا الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَ فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْسَبْ وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ Allahu Akbar Sami Allahu liman hamida Hamdin kathiran tayyiban mabarakin fi Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Deen Iyaka Na'abud wa Iyaka Nista'een Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem Sirat Al-Ladheena An-Amta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Wal-Adhan قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكله كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر Allahu Akbar
الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم We have some guests from uh, Meadowvale Islamic Center here with us today